Accommodation in Bangkok can be very affordable and at the same time, very comfortable. It is what I found out after I had to exile myself out of my own room for a week. And these were the places I randomly stayed for six nights and the rentals were mostly less than $10. The first night after I urgently left my room, I found a place on the Nile Road and that was the Boxpacker Pranakorn Hostel. It's 100 meters from San Japosia, a famous Chinese shrine, and about 400 meters from Khao San Road. So it's on a very good location, especially if you want to go to the Grand Palace and temples in the neighborhood during daytime, then go to clubs and bars in the evening. It's still very new. The shower rooms and toilets were very clean. They provided you shampoo, shower gel, and hair dryers like all other hostels that I stay. The price was just 224 baht, that's around 7.4 dollars. The only complaint I had was just the aircon. It's not broken, but the temperature was set a bit too high for me. The receptionist told me that most of the guests were from countries in temperate climate like Europe or America, not many from countries located in tropical like me. So those guests would prefer to stay a bit warm, that's the explanation. Other than that, I was very happy to be there. And one thing i like to mention, in this area, there are a lot of prostitutes standing along the street. Most of them are polite. You won't get into trouble. If you don't mind that, this is a good choice. Next, I moved to Jorengung area. This one called Loft 22 because it's on Jorengung 22. It's about 700 meters from Yawarat or Chinatown. During that time, it's vegetarian festival, so it's quite busy. All hostels closer to Chinatown were fully booked. This place I paid for 207 baht or 6.8 dollars. In my room, there were other two guests and uh, the room is quite small. There was a very small cabinet over each bed so you could keep some valuable belongings but no padlock provided. Overall, it's a good experience. If you plan to go to Chinatown, this could be an option but if you don't mind to pay a little bit more, there are some others that closer to Chinatown. The next day, I went back to Pranakorn area again. The place is called the Printing House Hostel Bangkok. It's new and clean, it's near the city hall and the giant swing. It's not very far from Khao San Road, there's a bar on the top, which was nice for those who want to chill out at night, but not so nice for those who want to sleep early. Anyway, the bar would close around 10 pm, so it wouldn't bother you that much. What I liked the most was how they organized small space to provide you the most. In the room I shared with other three guests, I got a nice bed with TV, headphones, a cabinet with a padlock. The price was 299 baht or 9.8 dollars and that included a nice breakfast too. It's one of the best deals and with very good service. It's highly recommended. After staying away for three nights, I kind of missed my place. So I went across the river back to Bangkok Noi area, the neighborhood that I've been living since the day I was a uni student. This place is called Yak's House, which literally means a house of giant. You can see there's a giant on that trademark. It's not that large as their name suggested though. The bed was a capsule style with a cabinet sit behind your head but no padlock. It's quite new with nice common area, but I didn't like their shower rooms which were like small boxes without any ventilation. While showering, you wouldn't have a problem, but when you finished, you would get sweaty real quick. The other thing that I was not impressed was their deposit policy. When I checked in, they asked me to leave deposit for 500 baht, which never returned when I checked out, but I paid 288 baht for a night. I wouldn't expect to pay the deposit more than the rental, so I went there unprepared. I got only 300 in cash. They said I had to leave all 300 plus my national ID card, otherwise no check-in. 
So I had to walk around half a kilometer to find an ATM machine and walk back to check in again, which took quite a while as well. It's pretty old fashioned, that system. Even though the place was quite new, comparing with the printing house, it's 10 baht cheaper. But no TV, no headphones, no padlock, they had breakfast as well, but not as good at the printing house. While I sat in staying there, I found an interesting place near Bangabu, which close to Kaosan Road. They had a single room for just 259 baht, or $8.5. I booked it right away. It's called Sleepy Dealer Hostel Bar. The location was pretty quiet. On the opposite side, there's a temple and local community. I tried to contact them before I checked in to ask if they had some space where I could store my bike. But their contact number on Agoda and Facebook was not theirs but someone else's. Anyway, I went there on a bike. There was a fence next to the building that I could use. On the front door, I found their new contact number written on a post-it note very old school and ineffective way to communicate with customers these days. Anyway, the owner or manager was very friendly. She saw I carried a helmet, so she asked me where I leave my bike and I said, just outside. Then she told me that I can store my bike in the bar after the bar is closed. That's very kind of her. This place didn't ask me for any deposit. It's a very old building with wooden floor. It's quite noisy when you walked. And when I opened the door to my private single room, I was amused because the room was very small. The whole room was nothing but a bed. I wondered how they managed to get the bed in this small room. Anyway, it's very nice if you like privacy, but on a tight budget, this is the place you should consider. I liked it so much that I tried to book more nights, but it's not available anymore. After that, I looked up for a place near my office in the Dujak area, and I found a place called a Hostel Bangkok. Very humble name for a hostel, but the most expensive of all hostels that I have mentioned. Anyway, it's still on the budget. I paid for 368 baht a night, or around $12. It's a very large dorm room divided into four partitions, plenty of space for each guest, comparing with the single room in Sleepy Dealer Hostel Bar. It's new, it's clean, it has the best shower room, which is quite large, with glass door dividing dry and wet area. It has parking lots and common area which you can cook, watch TV, read a book, or do your work on your laptop. The location is close to Jatujak, the famous weekend market, and that's it. Not many tourist attractions around here. That might be the reason why. It's empty. I was the only guest occupied the mixed dorm room on the first night, and because I liked it very much, I booked another night. I highly recommend this place, even though there's nothing interesting around. But the BTS is not far from the hostel, and if Jatujak is on your travel plan, you can try it for a night and see if you like it or not. This advice is for those solo travelers like me. You don't have to plan ahead a lot. There's always a room somewhere available. The advantage is, if you don't like it, you don't stuck with it for the rest of your vacation. On the other hand, if you like it, tomorrow night, it may not be available anymore.